nameless evil is imprisoned in a place far beyond reach. Hurry up! If he were ever to be released, it would spell certain doom for all existence. Is this yours? <laughs> e? Oh my god. How about that music, right? This was good. Uh, brought to us uh, by the request of Mega Reacts. Hello, Mega Reacts. So, it's a little bit different from the uh, Cosmodos movies. Cosmodos only made two movies in a one episode of the uh, Cabinet of Curiosity, so I had to go somewhere else. Welcome to, um, I think it's going to be a new segment here. It's going to be called Metal Goth Fantasy or Goth Metal Fantasy. G-O-T-H Metal Fantasy. Which I guess would be a combination of gothic stuff and metal, heavy metal, industrial metal, death metal, whatever. So... We're gonna just we're diving into the lore and, and the fantasy world of what Psycho Gorman is. Here we have the cast. There is the lovely Nida Josihana as the girl, that mean girl that mistreats her brother. And you got As Asuka Kurosawa. I guess she's the witch in the in the end. Or maybe she's one of the hunters. I don't remember. Here we got all these different actors here. I think that's the dad at the far end. Kenneth Walsh. That's the narrator. The old man right there, that's the narrator. Uh, there's Matthew Nineveh. He's the uh, Psycho Gore man. I think he's the physical guy. And then you have the voice actor. Death, I don't know, Rich Evans. There's there's different uh, people here, different players. You got the dad, you got the mom. You got the brother who's kind of a pussy who lets his sister push him around. They do hug and embrace, but it's like, come on, what the fuck? You, you, you kick your brother around and you don't even apologize. What the fuck? Anyway, let's go over the presentation of this. Presentation. Um, what, what will I give for presentation? Presentation gets an A. Uh, just the way it looks like, I think, uh, as the actress uh, points out, this is not a kid's treehouse movie. This is a very dark, you know, as I call it, goth metal fantasy. You know, it's got gothic themes. It's got heavy metal themes or uh, death metal. There's no death metal used in this, but death metal is, it's, oh, they should have used death metal for the movie, but presentation is very good. I'll give it an A for this. The visuals, I'll give a B because it's basically, as somebody says, Power Rangers. It's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Power Rangers in space. It's Big, big Bad Beetleborgs. It's VR Troopers. Uh, it's not very expensive costuming. Uh, very, very little CGI ever used. And uh, all the all the different armies. There's the council, and there's the army of evil. Um, I really am impressed. I mean, I think that this was what Masters of the Universe could have looked like. Now, uh, Psycho Gorman goes on about. Now, it's kind of like the same setup as Golan the Insatiable. Anybody remember Golan? Go Dylan. Remember Dylan? Remember the guy that was the original creator? He did the voice. And then they ruined it. They made it a half-hour show, but they got somebody else to do the voice acting. It's like, what happened to the creator? Just let him do the voice. And then they canceled Goal and the Insatiable. So Goal and the Insatiable kind of has that same, that was like the precursor to this. But, I mean, this has all these big visuals. So uh, they go over his origin story, and there's these warriors. And it looks like Eternia. It looks like Eternia with the Council, the Council of Elders, the armies, uh, people fighting each other. Uh, it's it's very short, very brief, because it's a it's not a high budget movie. They can only do so much. But we do see the council of people. We do see the the white angel that descends upon Psycho Gorman. A lot of a lot of blood, a lot of guts, um, a lot of stuff. I'm gonna give it. Well, I think that should go into the sort of the special effects. But for right now, the visuals of the costumes and the visual look. I, I'm gonna give it a B. I don't think it was as good as the presentation itself, but I I liked it all right. 
The story will get a C. Um, a C, and it's just a very typical story. I mean, there's not a whole lot going on there. It's essentially you, you have a, uh, a demon who comes from another world, okay, and ends up on Earth. And this little girl, well, actually, he's, he's, he's been in purgatory for a long time. So he was this great demon who led armies against the good guys or whatever, whoever the good guys are, because all these heroes are all violent because it's, it's that kind of dark fantasy. And so uh, PG is sent to Earth in a, in a hole in the back of a, of a white family uh, suburb, cul-de-sac, in the backyard, okay? He's been there for how many thousands of years, tens of thousands of years? So he's in there, and so uh, the brother and sister are playing bullshit dodgeball. That's what I'm going to call it. I don't remember the name of it. It involves like five or six colored balls, and you have to dodge the balls. Uh, if you lose, then you have to do jumping jacks, and you have to do all kinds of stuff. You have to squawk like a chicken. I don't know what you have to jump up and down, do cartwheels. You have to, you know, count. You have to do the alphabet backwards, whatever. It's a whole lot of bullshit. There's no, there's no set of rules. Okay, so it's bullshit dodgeball, and uh, the the boy has to uh, bury himself in a hole. And that's when they find this lid that has a jewel, and the jewel unleashes Psycho Gorman, and he's like a golem, and you remember the story, the Jewish story of the golem. Uh, you create the golem and you control the golem. So the little girl gets this ruby jewel and she she controls him with the golem. It's a very, you know, it, the story isn't great, but it's 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 a fun story. Uh, I would say it's like average, maybe to above average. But I would say about C. So it's, it's, it's a, you know, it's basically, this is an excuse for all these costume warriors on both sides to attack each other, and then Earth's the battleground. At the end, of course, Psycho Gorman decides to devastate the Earth, and the family is spared, because that little girl made him promise not to uh, kill her or her family, but everyone else gets to die. So that's that's the deal. So that looks like fun. And uh, yeah, that's the story. Music. What should I give the music? I shall give it a B-. minus. Yeah, B-, minus because... Uh, it was very good. It's very good music to rock out to, but it wasn't outstanding. But it was very good. Uh, I didn't hear. A, I didn't get to hear a lot of it. But I say B minus for the music. Special effects get an A plus because of the gore. It's all you can't have a movie called Psycho Gore Man without the fucking gore. So A plus, and it's like it gets really gruesome. Almost a, like if if you can barely see the fatalities of people in. Mandy, right? You see, so you see stuff happening in Mandy, and you see some of that stuff in Beyond the Black Rainbow. You're seeing it flat out in in bright color in Psycho Gorman. So it's really, I mean, especially what happens to the cop, and he gets mutilated. The cops are of no use. The cops are useless. So A plus because the cops are fucking useless. And so um, what is it, Craig? I like the fight, though, between Craig and the wife, right? Greg and the wife. Greg's lazy as fuck. And there's this line where it's like, who's, who, who's going to be lazy now? Or who's going to be, uh, who do you think is lazy, Susan? That's why they call her Susan, because they, he can use the line, lazy Susan. It's really good. So, yeah, um, A plus for the special effects, uh, the costumes of the costumes. But I, I, it's the blood and the guts and the ripping out of, of intestines and the, the gore is exactly what you think it is, and it's on point. And even though it looks a little cheap, I, I mean, the more practical the effect is for this kind of thing, the better. So A plus for the practical effects. Now, before I give my overall score, I want to give my final thoughts. This was a, a movie that obviously is not for kids. I would say it's more rated R or rated PG-13. I would say probably... 15 or 16, maybe 16. I don't know what, I mean, it's easy to like, I mean, I don't know, maybe not. I mean, like you see this monster and you think this is not going to be a kid's movie, you know, but it's like, what, can you think of a lot of people that could watch this movie? Like your neighbors, your friends, or people at the supermarket or people at the bank, could they watch this movie and not cringe? Um, and yet everything is great. 
I mean, just everything I liked so far. The only thing that's cheesy is the story. Like, the plot is going to be the fucking plot. But I did like seeing, like, this sort of modern Eternia with all the play sets, all the big, all the big sets, all the big things. But it's all very brief, uh, what we could have had uh, with Masters of the Universe. Um, and we just have these dark, twisted, like, warriors. And, and you see when, he, when Psycho Gorman turns on his people, because his people turn on him. They, they wanted him to stay tethered to that little girl and never be in control. So everyone's turned on him. The, the Council of Elders who are at the beginning of this. And by the way, at the, at the, the post credit scene, they, they uh, play Russian roulette or whatever. It's like uh, there's only one way out. So, he, so one of the, the, the guy, the second in charge, pulls out a pistol and just says, okay, let's do that. So, you know, it's uh, for a different society. They sure, sure seem to find a gun from Earth. Where do they get the gun? That's why the story isn't much. But it's about a C for the story and all that. Um, I mean, the, the, the guy who does the voice and the performer, they're both very good. There's a lot of slime when the creature, well, when the guy, and then the, and then there's a warrior's death where you're getting devoured by Psycho Goreman. There's so many great practical effects. Uh, I hated the little girl. Um, I think he should have just at least punched her once the the brother, um, Greg is lazy. I don't know why the little girl went off with Greg if she was like mistreated. It should have been the girls on one side and the boys on the other, but I there's a reason why it's split up the way it is because uh, she has to defend she has to defend PG, and then you have the boy and his mother and the uh, Petora or whatever uh, on the other side. It's 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 just this weird battle of chess and. They have the bullshit ball game. And she's just so annoying. She just like she just doesn't give a shit about anything at all. She breaks the stat she breaks the Christ cross up on her knee. She just doesn't answer to anybody, really. The police are horrible. Um there's a lot of dark humor. There's a lot of cheesy stuff that you expect to see. I mean, it's it's sort of this goth metal version of E.T and uh alf where the strange creature comes in it's it's not an isekai it's a reverse isekai in which uh even though the creature's in another world the, it's like the family has to there has to be a name for it you know alf um you know et there has to be something to that you know uh i think alf was you know they had to cash in on the whole et thing so that's that was so that was so it's like that you know if, if you are if you kind of moved past Alf and you're watching this, this should be a good time for you. So let me get my overall score. A minus. So I will uh, wrap this up and I will explain what I'm going to start uh, a new genre called uh, either goth metal fantasy or metal goth fantasy. And I'll do a vlog in the morning. Uh, clear the cobwebs a bit. And we'll do a uh, gaming night. Uh, that will be a surprise. You'll all figure it out. No, you'll, you will not figure out which game until I actually show it, until I post it. I'll let you guess which video game. It will be a video game I'll be playing on Sunday night. 